Hi, welcome to the analysis, design, and simulation of a forward converter part four. I'm uh, Robert Bolaños, and uh, I'll be going over this uh, a tutorial. On the part four, let me go uh, back real quick, just a quick review of what we did in part four. In part four, Basically, I define or discuss what the uh, continuous conduction mode is in uh, discontinuous conduction mode. And uh, we want to operate in the continuous conduction mode. And drew two waveforms, basically, where it shows how the current in the inductor uh, how that defines whether you're in the continuous conduction mode or discontinuous. Uh, basically, in the continuous conduction mode, you always have current through the inductor. And it's very important because if your inductor uh, goes to zero, then you're operating in discontinuous no mode, and then you start uh, peak detecting. So it's a phenomenon where it doesn't work very well. And then I also defined uh, how the current or the total current going through basically the inductor is really a combination of a, a, a DC current and I'm using DC current just to simplify the explanation so DC when I think of DC I'm thinking that it has no AC component and it implies that the frequency is zero Hertz in other words you don't have any frequency component that's why I call it DC and since you have a little bit of ripple, you also have a, a, a component uh, which is uh, AC driven. In other words, it's the ripple of the switching frequency. In this case, uh, I'm switching at 100 kilohertz, so I have a basically a sawtooth that looks basic like this. So this little modulation in your ripple, I call that the AC, right? And then the average if you were to average it out is actually the DC okay basically you want the DC going into your R load and the AC going through your capacitor okay so I did a quick simulation showed how to uh, ter uh, calculate the turns ratio calculate VL and then once I have VL I chose a uh, uh, delta uh, ripple or current going through the inductor of 10% of 1 amp which uh, gave me 100 milliamp so I ended up with 197 microhenry simulated it here's a simulation circuit okay and uh, this is a two switch forward converter and I did the simulation and these are some of the results as you can tell the, uh, uh, the original design was for 3.3 Okay, and this is the current through the inductor. Okay, so part four uh, in the simulation, and let me go ahead and run the simulation again. I have it here, and if you remember, it's 15 micro and uh, microfarad, and I'm using an ESR. ESR means equivalent series resistance of one ohm. Okay, so I'll go ahead and run it, and we're going to measure the ripple. And if I remember, I wanted a ripple of 33 millivolts peak to peak. And when I ran the simulation, I believe it, it exceeded that. So we're going to see what can we do uh, to get it within spec. Okay. So we'll wait a little bit here. And let me go ahead and stop it. Maybe. Already at steady state. Yeah, that's close enough. It's in steady state. So let me maximize this. And I'm going to measure the ripple here. It settled out. Okay. And I can go to cursor and then type in or select the Y2 minus Y1. So I have one cursor there, the other cursor there. Okay. And if I look here, it's 74.2 millivolts. So it's actually 74.2 millivolts of ripple. 
okay and remember uh, this, my specification that I'm uh, uh, or my goal is for 1% of 3.3 volts in other words 33 millivolts so I'm not meeting the specification on this one okay so how do you set it okay good question okay uh, you can go ahead and do a Google search and there's a TI application uh, AN-776 and there's the well-known equation that's also in several of the power electronic engineering books and power supply design books and basically the, your delta I times the time period okay divided by 8 times your delta V so your delta V in this case is the 33 millivolts hang on let me see where I'm at is the 33 millivolts which is right there and TP is the reciprocal of uh, of 100 kilohertz that comes up to 10 her, uh, 10 microseconds and of course the ripple or the current AC uh, the IAC that I designed was for 100 milliamps that goes in there okay so when you use this equation well-known equation it shows that I need a capacitance of at least 3.78 microfarads okay so this means that this is the minimum capacitance I can go higher okay so there's no problem now if I go lower than this then I would expect not to meet the specification but if I go higher I would expect to meet the specification okay but let me go back but may not be always true okay so this is a big put a little star this equation may not be true and it only holds water if your ESR is very low you can say this value would be if you have an ideal capacitor somewhat okay so I have to be careful how I quantify it so this in my opinion would be the minimum capacitors and that would be if your capacitor is approaching kind of like an ideal okay and I'll do some simulation just to verify if it's true or not and the question would be next why why does this equation not hold if the ESR is not low well because the ESR of the capacitor may actually be the dominant parameter this is very true very true true okay so what does that mean okay <laughs> let's go back and look at the schematic of the output filter here's the output filter and uh, I didn't draw the primary not necessary for the analysis but in the analysis I had mentioned that the current or the total current going through this inductor is going to be made up of two components it's going to be the current DC plus your AC current okay and the main idea that you want to do in the output filter is you want this DC component to actually flow through your R load okay which is depicted by this arrow and you want your AC signal to actually go through this capacitor okay so you want to separate these two okay so knowing that okay 
and I guess with a little bit of hand waving we can draw two schematics. We can draw this schematic which I can you can call that it's the DC equivalent okay and we'll say that this is your IDC okay and when I think of current DC it implies that the frequency is zero, zero hertz. In other words, you don't have any frequency components. Okay. So let's take a look at this. Okay. Let me go ahead and put a little ground there. Ground there. Okay. So if you have this current flowing through here, and remember it's a DC current, well, it's got two paths. It can either go through here or it can either go through here. Okay. Or it can flow through both sides. Okay. Depending on uh, which has a lower impedance. Okay. So let's look at the impedance looking into this node. Okay, and if you notice, you have a capacitor and you have an ESR. In this case, I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and assume that the ESR is 300 millivolts, uh, milliohms. Okay, and that's in series with the capacitor. Okay, so now if you want to look at what Zn is, okay, the first thing that we have to do is we need to calculate what the reactance is of the capacitor. Okay, now the capacitance reactance is 1 divided by 2 pi Fc. Okay. Now here is the importance of this statement that it implies DC implies that there's zero hertz. Okay. So this term would be zero and actually a zero in the denominator means that all of this is going to be zero. So basically what happens is as F goes to zero the reactance of the capacitor which are in units of ohms actually goes to infinity. And what does that mean? It's an open. Okay. In other words it's high impedance. It's an open. Okay. So that means that th this current cannot flow through here. Okay. So instead, and just a reminder, it's 100 milliamps. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not 100 milliamps. It's one amp. Okay. One amp. Instead of flowing through here, it can't because it doesn't have any DC uh, AC component so this is open so it cannot flow through there so instead the current flows through this because it has a much much lower impedance of 3.3 .3 versus an open so in this case IDC flows through this path and does not flow in this path okay so now Let's look at the AC. Okay. In this case, this has an AC component of approximately 100 milliamps. Okay. And basically, we do the same thing here. Okay. The AC component can either flow through this or it can flow through your load. Okay. And again, we do the same thing. We do, uh, in this case, since it has an AC component, it has an AC component at a hundred kilohertz. Okay. So when we look at the impedance, we look at the impedance or the capacitance reactance of the capacitor. In this case, when we plug in the number and we plug in the frequency, in this case it's a hundred kilohertz, and we plug in fifteen uh, microfarads, we end up with a reactance of 106 milliohms. Okay, so basically this capacitor looks like a 
106 milliohm resistor, a negative J with a negative J component. Okay, it's an imaginary number. Okay, so now the impedance is a real part which is composed by the ESR and an imaginary part which is uh, consists of the reactance of the capacitor. So when you look at the magnitude, you plug in the ESR and you plug in the X of C and you find the magnitude. So you end up with the impedance of 318 milliohms. So basically when you look into this node you have 318 milliohms looking into here and when you look into here you basically have 3.3. .3. Now if you look at the difference this is approximately 10 times less than this. This node is much much smaller than this node and it's approximately 10 times lower okay so what happens okay so let's go ahead and uh, do a little bit of math okay we draw the same uh, schematic we know what the impedance is or at least the magnitude and we set it up and now we're going to calculate how much current is going through here and how much current would be through here okay now we know that this is going to be a hundred milliamps okay and if you use the current divider rule you end up with this equation okay so what we're going to do is we're going to get the I ripple that is going through the ESR or through this branch and when you plug in the numbers which is a hundred milliamps times 3.3 .3 ohms divided by 3.3 .3 ohms plus the impedance of Z1 which is 318 milliohms you end up with 91.2 milliamps so approximately 91 percent of the current is going through here while the rest which is what 8, 9, uh, it's uh, 8.8, no, 98.8. Let's see, is going through this, or the remainder is going through through that uh, this node. Okay, so what does that tell you? Okay, well, that current is going through here, and in a sense, you can kind of think that this capacitor is a short, so most of the V ripple is developed across this uh, resistor okay so now now that you know what this ripple is that goes in here and the 300 milliohm goes in here so you end up with a ripple of 27 millivolts and remember my specification called for 33 millivolts peak to peak Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, simulate this and see how accurate it really is. Okay, so let me go ahead and come over here and I'll change this to 0 0.3 uh, 300 milliohms and I'll go ahead and uh, rerun it. So remember, I now I decrease this resistor from one ohm to 300 milliohms. Okay. Okay. So it reached steady state, and I'll go ahead and zoom in here. Okay. And I can go ahead and put the delta Y. Let's put one cursor there. 
and the other cursor there and the ripple is 20 27.6 so it's 27.6 uh, millivolts get rid of that so uh, simulation shows that it's correct okay so so this holds okay now let's go ahead and look at the simulation again okay so this is true okay so now let's go ahead and see what happens if we were to increase this to 10 times the capacitor to 10 times okay this is just to demonstrate that the ESR in this case is the dominant because the capacitor is already above the minimum uh, required uh, capacitance that is required so no matter how much more capacitance we add it really is not going to help the ripple okay I'm going to run it a little bit longer because I added so much capacitance it takes time for it to settle out It's almost there. Sorry, I have to rerun the simulation. Okay, again, the simulation is to show that if your ESR is not low enough, it doesn't matter how much capacitance you may add, although adding extra capacitance will lower the ESR itself, but adding just the capacitance itself without lowering the ESR does not do anything so before we had 27 millivolts and I remember I added 10 times more the capacitance and if I look here that's the minimum is 27.3 millivolts same so adding more capacitance per se did not generally uh, add or, or actually reduce the, the the ripple okay now let me go back and try to simulate this condition okay now when I said that this equation is valid and it's generally valid if you have an ideal uh, component or an ideal capacitor and when I mean ideal it means that the ESR is extremely extremely low okay so theoretically if I was to do a simulation and set it to 3.78 I should get 33 millivolts okay so let's go ahead and do that okay we'll change this to 3.78 3.78 ok 
Okay. Now to make this an ideal uh, capacitor, let's set this to one micro ohm, which is basically zero. And let's go ahead and run it. And supposedly and theoretically, I should get close to the 30, 33 millivolts that the equation predicts. Okay, that should be enough, hopefully. Yes, okay. And I'll maximize it. So now I can go ahead and zoom in. Okay. And I go to my delta Y. Here's the maximum, here's the minimum. And if I look in here, 33.18 millivolts. So the equation is true. It does predict what is the minimum capacitance that you need, but it assumes that you have you would have an extremely low ESR or basically no no ESR. Okay. So basically that equation holds true if you have an ideal component. However, you have to be careful because most of the time or some of the times the ESR will be the dominant. So what you have to do in most cases you may have to cascade several capacitors two or three that way the total ESR between the three end, uh, ends up uh, low enough to meet your ripple specification hopefully this makes a little sense if there's questions uh, you can email me at r bola b o l a three five six one eight at AOL dot com. Uh, you can email me there for the lecture notes or for spice uh, uh, top spice files uh, so you can simulate uh, these uh, tutorial lessons. Thank you for watching.